Greetings, everybody. If your brakes are making sounds like this, Well, guess what? Mine are too. And I wanted to take the opportunity to show you the likely cause, uh, why you don't want to ignore that, and what a person might do to remedy it for informational purposes only, of course. And that's what's coming up on this episode of... So, real quick, this is not a comprehensive how-to. Brakes are really important stuff. I just, you know, don't want to be held responsible for if, I don't know, you mess up your brakes and like lose control and plow into a group of nuns or something. Uh, just be careful. If you're not 100% sure of what you're doing, don't work on brakes. Find somebody who is, you know, into that kind of thing. So now that I've got that out of the way, let's see what's going on here. Vehicles up on jack stands. We've got the wheel removed because that's got to happen. Next thing is I got to remove this caliper here, which depending on how long they've been on the car, is going to dictate how difficult they are to remove. By the way, this is like the greatest tool purchase I've ever made in my life. Um, I plan on doing a review on it soon, so that's pretty cool. Of course, it works better when you, you know, have it the right way. You never want to let a caliper just hang from the brake hoses. That's really bad for it. So you can use bungee cord, piece of coat hanger, really just about anything that will hold it for you and keep the pressure off of the, the brake line. You probably won't have to remove the rotor, but I'm going to get it out of the way because it's going to make it easier for me to show you what's going on. I'm going to go ahead and take the pads out as well. Again, probably not necessary, but it's going to make it easier. And try to lay things out when you do this in a way that you'll be able to put it back together because you want to put things back where you found them. This is a single piston caliper. It's going to be the most common type that you're going to find on pretty much everything, but maybe really, I don't know, heavy trucks or performance vehicles, kind of the standard. There's just one piston, you know, the brake fluid pushes the piston. Uh, which clamps, you know, pushes this pad out and you want to get both pads clamping down on the rotor, which would ride right between them. This caliper has to be able to slide back and forth on its mount because as this piston pushes in, it needs to be able to pull this piston, this, you know, the opposite direction in order to clamp down equally on both sides of the rotor. If that doesn't happen, then you get a situation where really pressure is being applied unevenly on the rotor uh, from both sides. So, you know, one pad will wear faster than the other if this isn't allowed to slide back and forth. And I'll show you how it slides in just a second. The reason that if your brakes are making that creaking noise that you don't want to ignore it is because, like I said, for one, it'll wear your pads unevenly, shortening the useful life of the, the set of pads. And you can actually get a situation, which I've experienced, where, where the caliper doesn't slide back and forth like it's supposed to, and actually kind of gets stuck against the rotor. And you'll notice a really annoying squeaking sound, just like a squeak, 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 sound as you're driving. That can also be caused by uh, the caliper not being able to slide like it should. If we look at the pads, they're wearing pretty evenly. This probably hasn't been happening for too awful long, so it shouldn't be too much of an issue. But again, just be aware of it, that if your brakes are creaking or it'll wear through one of the pads real quick. What we need to do here is separate the two parts of the caliper, the mounting portion, and then, you know, what contains the actual piston and the pads. If we're lucky, that shouldn't be too difficult. And yeah, this is seized up pretty good. One side moves a little bit. The other one doesn't and you should be able to move this back and forth by hand you should see the distance right here between these two points should be moving back and forth so it might take some brute force to get this apart but we'll get it done just gonna use a screwdriver and kind of pry a little bit and you want to do it evenly on each side work back and forth got to be careful with these little boots they can tear so just kind of work it around gently pull the boot off of its little ridge and do the same thing on the other side. If these are torn, you want to replace them just because that's what keeps dirt and water from getting inside where the pins need to slide. And then now we should be able to hopefully pull this apart. And yeah, you can feel it is dry. It's all dirty and bound up. These are the pins that I was talking about. This half of the caliper 
is what actually mounts to the axle. And then these pins are what allow the caliper to, to slide back and forth. So what we need to do is clean these up, just a rag and maybe some brake cleaner. I'll do that real quick. But we just want to get all this old, old grease and dirt. It looks like it might even have some corrosion going on, but we can try to get as much of that off as possible. That should be pretty clean. And then just to keep the brake cleaner from damaging the rubber boots, I'm gonna go ahead and remove those from this half. Just very, very gently. Try not to tear them. Yeah, yeah, see this is all kinds of cruddy junk. And then you can use, you know, like a stick and a towel or really whatever you can find to try to clean as much of the old grease out from these holes as you can as well. I'm gonna do that off camera. Okay, so we've got this cleaned out. I just sprayed some brake cleaner down in there, let it soak, brushed it around a little bit and got all the old grease out of here. And we've got the old grease cleaned off the pins. It's time to regrease everything and this is the product that I'm going to use, Seal Glide Brake Lubricant. It's pretty highly recommended um, and it's real cheap too. It's half the price of some of the other brake greases out there and it's got everything you could ask for. So this is what we're going to use. So we're going to take a wee bit and put it on the pin, on both pins actually. Uh, so the reason you want to use something like this as opposed to bearing grease you don't want anything petroleum based. I've never tried to use it, but they say that that will affect the rubber boots that seal up the caliper in the pin. So, you know, you don't want that happening. And this was cheap. So I figured why not use the right stuff for the job. If it wasn't cheap, that'd be a whole different story. And of course, can't forget to put the boots back on. I can just slide these on and then get them situated better. Let me put everything back together. Gonna have to kind of work it over the little ridge that it sits on. Now I'm sure you don't want to go too crazy with the grease, but I'm going to put just a little bit more on because that boot took a little bit with it. And then now we can take our caliper actual mount and slide it onto the pins. And if you remember, I couldn't move it by hand before and now that glides real well. That's what we want. Okay, so now we got to put the other end of the rubber boot over the ridge so that it's sealed on both ends and same thing on this side just got to reinstall the pads while trying not to you know get any contamination on the pads themselves of course you know, make sure you don't have any of that grease on your hands when you're putting these in here put the rotor back on reinstall the caliper So everything's back together. I'm just gonna to torque down the mounting bolts for the caliper, put the wheel back on it and everything's done. All right, so I gotta get the caliper mounted down firmly, get the wheel and tire back on. Once all that's done, I'll have, you know, nice silent brakes again. Uh, the main thing is just to make sure you get those pins cleaned and lubricate them well, uh, and then just put everything back together. It's a good idea to lubricate those pins anytime you have the brakes apart. So if I don't know if you're swapping rotors or changing pads, any, any kind of thing like that where you got to remove the caliper. It's worth taking a few minutes to lube those pins up. Keeps everything running just like it should. If this helped get you pointed in the right direction to diagnosing the noise that you're experiencing, go ahead and hit that thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Uh, I'm working on new DIY content all the time. Check out the videos that I have uploaded already. There's some more good tips in there. And as always, thank you guys for watching and I hope you have a great day.